Russian President Vladimir Putin will meet with Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan next week. The Kremlin confirmed Friday, just over six weeks after Moscow called off a pact reached by Ankara and the United Nations. Welcome everyone, in today's video, we're going to tell Russia Putin sends fighter jets to Turkey to help Palestine. Dmitry Peskov, a Kremlin spokesman, said Putin and Erdogan would meet on Monday at Russia's Black Sea resort of Sochi. But before we proceed the further video, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. The announcement put an end to weeks of suspense about when and where the two leaders would next meet, as international efforts continue to try to patch up the Black Sea Grain Initiative, which delivered grain to portions of Africa, the Middle East, and Asia where hunger is on the rise. Ukraine and Russia are key global producers of wheat, barley sunflower oil, and other commodities that developing countries rely on. Turkey and the United Nations reached a compromise in July 2022 that allowed Ukraine to resume shipping food from three black seaports. Under the project, ship and cargo inspections were handled from Turkey, from which vessels went to and from Ukraine. Almost 33,000 tons of grain left Ukraine while the deal was in place. Ankara's role was crucial. Despite Western sanctions, Turkey remains one of Russia's biggest economic partners and a logistical base for its overseas trade. Erdogan addresses Putin as my dear friend. A separate pact signed by Moscow and the United Nations concurrently with the Ukraine proposal promised to assist in overcoming wartime hurdles to Russian food and fertilizer exports. Russian officials regularly threatened to pull out of the arrangements, and they finally did in July, claiming that their terms had not been met. Russia has claimed that shipping and insurance limitations have limited its agricultural exports, yet it has sent record amounts of wheat since last year. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres gave Russia a new proposal in hopes of restarting the pact, but it did not fulfill Moscow's conditions. According to Russian Foreign Minister Sergei, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov mentioned this when meeting with his Turkish counterpart, Hakan Fidan, in Moscow on Thursday. Lavrov stated that he presented the Turkish government a list of acts that the West would need to perform in order for Ukraine's Black Sea exports to resume. The upcoming talks between Putin and Erdogan may help unlock that? The meeting was announced on Monday, just as two bulk cargo ships left the Ukrainian port city of Yuzhny on Friday. According to Ukrainian Minister of Infrastructure Oleksandr Kubrakov, the Liberian-flagged Anna Teresa and the ocean courtesy were carrying pig iron and iron ore concentrate while flying the Marshall Islands flag. It was unclear under what legal and security conditions the ships had sailed. The ocean courtesy was en route to Romania's Black Sea city of Constanta and is expected to arrive Saturday afternoon, according to the worldwide ship tracking website Marine Traffic. The webpage stated that the Ana Teresa will arrive at Varna, Bulgaria, on the same day. Meanwhile, Russian officials announced on Friday that air defenses intercepted drones going towards three of the country's western regions. Regional governors reported that defense systems intercepted three drones in the Kursk, Belgorod, and Moscow areas. Moscow airports temporarily paused flights, but no major damage or injuries were recorded, according to Russian authorities. Drones launched at Russian targets, which Moscow blames on Ukraine, have become nearly regular occurrences as the war enters its 19th month and Kyiv's forces launch a counteroffensive. Recently, the drones penetrated deeper into Russia. The apparent Ukrainian objective is to unnerve Russia and put pressure on Russian President Vladimir Putin, despite the fact that Kyiv officials rarely admit or deny involvement for strikes on Russian land. The Associated Press has been unable to determine if the drones were launched from Ukraine or within Russia. Major General Kyrylo Budanov, Ukraine's military intelligence head, stated in an interview with WebSource, the war zone that we work from the territory of Russia. He didn't elaborate. Meanwhile, the APE's analysis of satellite imagery shows that suspected Ukrainian drone assaults late Tuesday destroyed at least two Ilushin Il-76 military transport planes at a Russian airbase. Budanov said that the transport planes were deliberately targeted. 
The photographs shot on Thursday show Princess Olga Pieskov International Airport, a hybrid military civilian airport located 700 kilometers, 400 miles north of the Ukrainian border and close Estonia and Latvia. The four-engine IL-76 is the backbone of the Russian military's airlift capacity, capable of landing and taking off in harsh conditions. The Russian military is thought to have more than 100 of these in its fleet. The AP investigation, done on Friday, revealed what seemed to be the blackened hulks of two IL-76 on separate parking pads on the airbase's apron. One included the plane's tail, while the other looked to show components from another aircraft. Fire damage could be visible across the pad. Eleven more IL-76s were moved from their parking pads to separate locations on the airport's taxiways, possibly to make it more difficult for them to be struck again. One was on the runway itself. Another IL-76 stayed on the pad, but it was unclear why. This satellite image was obtained at 1.3 p.m. GMT. On Thursday, anti-aircraft fire was seen on social media Thursday night, but it was unclear whether it was part of another attack. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky stated Thursday that his country had developed a weapon capable of hitting a target 700 kilometers 400 miles distant, presumably referring to the airbase attack. He stated that the weapon was manufactured by Ukraine's Ministry of Strategic Industries, but did not provide any other information. Oleksiy Danilov, Secretary of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council, indicated on television Friday that the weapon can fly considerably higher than Zelensky mentioned. During a phone chat with Palestinian Authority President Mahoud Abbas on Friday, Russian President Vladimir Putin committed to continue providing humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip while also supporting a peaceful end to the conflict between Israel and Hamas. Russia will continue to supply the Gaza Strip with essential goods, including medicines and medical equipment, Putin told Abbas, according to a Kremlin readout adding that the Russian president emphasizes the importance of a quick cessation of the bloodshed and the resumption of the political process. Putin also urged for a resumption of the peace process to establish a Palestinian state along pre-1967 lines. In this context, the Russian side expressed support for the efforts made by the Palestinian leadership led by Mahmoud Abbas, according to a Russian translation. Israel has spoken out strongly against the attempt with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowing not to let Gaza become Fatastan, a reference to Abbas' political party. However, Jerusalem has become increasingly reliant on us backing, which backs efforts to pave the way for a two-state solution following the war. The Biden administration also wants the Palestinian Authority to someday lead a unified West Bank in Gaza, but it admits that Ramallah must first undergo considerable reforms in the Palestinian Authority's readout of Friday's call, Abbas went farther than Putin, calling for immediate and comprehensive ceasefire in Gaza. Abbas further emphasized that peace and security can only be achieved through the implementation of a two-state solution based on pre-1967 lines, according to the Paul readout. According to his office, Abbas reiterated the importance of swift humanitarian assistance and praised Putin for the help Russia has given to Gaza as well as Moscow's creation of a field hospital in the enclave. Last month, Russia transported over 85 tons of humanitarian aid to Egypt for delivery to Gaza. Putin has made a point of associating with the Palestinians since the war began, distinguishing himself from the United States, which has come out strongly in support of Israel. Earlier this month, Putin called the situation in the Gaza Strip as a catastrophe that dwarfed the Ukraine conflict. Everybody here and around the world can see and feel the difference between the special military operation and what is going on in Gaza, he said at a press conference referring to the Kremlin's battle in Ukraine. But there's nothing like this in Ukraine, he insisted. Putin's government maintains relations with both Hamas and Israel, but he has been outspoken in his criticism of Jerusalem. Putin is also widely believed to be seeking deeper ties with the Iranian government, Hamas's primary allies and financial benefactors. Russia justified starting the war by falsely alleging Ukraine is ruled by Nazis, which Putin repeated on Thursday without presenting any evidence. Following Hamas's violent assault of southern Israel on October 7, Israel launched a massive military campaign against the terror group, 
which murdered over 1,200 individuals, the most of whom were civilians, and kidnapped another 240 hostages into Gaza. Thomasir, the Hamas-run Gaza Health Ministry, claims more than 20,000 individuals have been killed in the Strip throughout the conflict, an unsubstantiated statistic, while Israel asserts that approximately 40 of them are Hamas terror operatives. That's all for today's video. The IDF reported Thursday that over 2,000 Hamas operatives have been killed since the interim ceasefire in Gaza ended on December 1. Around 8,000 Hamas fighters have been killed in Gaza since the war began, according to the military. After Hamas attacked Israel again on October 7, 1,000 militants died. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.